Hello? Hi, Tony. It's Jenny Stanley Clark. Hi, Jenny. How are you? I'm fine, you? Great, thanks. Great. I've just got Pete for you. Um, here we one minute. Oh, great. Thanks so much. Hi, Tony. It's Pete Way. How are you doing? I'm great, thanks. Thanks so much for taking the time. That's all right. Pleasure. Right on. Hey. Where are you located, actually? I get a little bit uh, uh, not quite sure where my interviews are sometimes, so uh, I wouldn't like to say you were in Alaska if you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Northern California. Oh, okay. I know that quite well, actually, uh, because I used to record with Mike Varney up there. Oh, yeah, yeah, in yeah. That, uh, you know, through the uh, shrapnel records. Sure, sure, yeah, I know Mike. So, so uh, oh, you know Mike, do you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's one of the uh, celebrities of uh, San Francisco, really, Mike. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen him for quite a while, but, uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah, same old Mike. How, how's he going? Same, same, still oh, sorry, records, still doing the same stuff. Yeah, he's a uh, quiet character, Mike. Always very co uh, close to my heart. Very cool. Hey, first off, uh, the question that you know everybody wants to know is how how are you feeling these days, Pete? Oh, much better, much better. Had a pretty rough time, you know, obviously with the cancer, uh, because you never know which way it's going to go. But uh, I got all the all clearance, and that was. That was a relief, but um, it still takes a while when you get the aftercare. You know what I mean? So oh, yeah, yeah, sure. I've I've been through it with relatives and friends and stuff. Yeah, it's it's a hell of a thing. Yeah, I mean, you get um, other tablets and this this and that that uh, you get your sort of hot sweats and cold sweats. I'll oh, just try and live a normal life and get on with the, the music, you know, as best I can. There you go. Hey, second question comes from uh, your friend Vinny Moore. Vin Vin oh, Vinny. How, yeah. is, Vinny. how is Vinny? He's great. He's, 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 he's such a nice guy. He's, 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 he's wonderful. Oh, he's 10 out of 10 for me, absolutely. He Terrific guitar player. Always a pleasure. Probably... I don't think I kept up to his standard, to be honest with you. <laughs> but um, I was he always amazed me. Yeah, he he wanted to know how Mister Squirrel is doing. <laughs> Mister Squirrel's fine. Ask him about. Um, I, I got some fan mail from uh, actually Poland. It reminded me at the time I got his used underpants and put them up for sale with the uh, t-shirts and uh, somebody actually paid two hundred dollars for his sweaty underpants uh the following day it was wonderful but worst thing was that he kept the two hundred dollars okay. i think it was prague actually czechoslovakia um but I, he went oh thanks very much there's a photograph of the guy with his underpants and he did it for a laugh but uh but uh, I thought, oh, you know, nobody's going to buy those. Put them up with the uh, T-shirts, and uh, so therefore, Finny made uh, made a bit of cash on the side. It's a good day in merch. Yeah, I'm I'm going to be seeing him on Sunday, actually. So I'll tell him you said, hey. Oh, please, do, yeah, give him my very best. Well, uh, if you got this number here, or he, he can always. Email. Um, I, off the top of my head, I can't think of my cell phone um, number actually. But that's okay. Uh, I'll, but, I'll give you this one, and uh, if you want to leave me with an email, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. Hey, well, Jenny will do that. Right on. I'll get that from her. Hey, moving on. Uh, great to hear that you got the album almost put together, and uh, you're, you're starting to gear up for a tour. What's the latest news on that? Um, well, yeah, we're, we're unfortunately, till you actually have the finished product, and it can be as finished as you like, but you can't play fresh air to people, you know, but we've had an awful lot of offers for touring, 
Uh, but obviously, financially, um, it's better with a finished album that you can pinpoint your dates and things like that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, consequently, um, it's very, very close. Mr. Clink has uh, really started to pull his socks up, as they say, or, mm-hmm. you know, kicking ass. Right on. Uh, that was my next question. You've got one of the world's great producers in Mike Clink working on your record. How did how did that happen? Oh, uh, we've known each other for a long time. And just by chance, I sent him some roughs of the songs. And I said to him, have you got any suggestions? He said, yeah, I do. I'd like to do the album. We'll pull it apart. But I, want, I love the songs. And I said, yeah, but I'm singing. He said, yeah, but I really like your singing, which is a bit of a shock. But, uh, no, Mike, as I say, he, he said he, he only did it because he actually really likes the music and he liked the vocals. So uh, that was that. So I believe he's ripped it apart. He's used some of his superstar friends to um, play on it because due to the fact I was off for about a year with the with the cancer, um, it meant it very difficult for me to uh, be much more involved. Although Mike wanted to pull it apart anyway, so I thought, well, enjoy yourself in California. I'll enjoy the English uh, rain. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, at w- what point were you in the album's creation when you got interrupted by the uh, the health issue? Um. Gosh, uh, she probably had most of the tracks roughly down. And I was having what I thought was a routine check, and I got called in for the results, and then suddenly um, I thought, well, cancelled, you know, and then suddenly it's, have you got somebody with you, which, of course, they like to have if they're going to tell you you've got cancer. Well... As it would happen, I was lucky uh, because I had prostate cancer, which is the one, if you're going to have cancer, to have that and catch it early. And mm-hmm. on both on, you know, on both levels, I won on that, you know. Um, it's just um, a little bit hard dealing with it because, you yeah, know, I still deal, deal with hot and cold flushes, things like that. But that's more at night. Uh, not too bad if I'm in the day, but, uh, you know, you get the... You need to do some light exercise. But I had 11 tumours actually killed off by radiotherapy, you know. Mm-hmm. That's tough. Um, yeah. Now, as far as touring goes, do you have actually have a band selected and put together to go on the road with? Well, to be honest with you, uh, yes. But for me to say definite would be no. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I, let me tell you why. Because um, unless you give people a schedule, um, you can't say, can you be available for this and that. I've had an awful lot of enthusiasm uh, from people that, you know, great players and, um, you know, lucky for the support I've had, but until you can actually say we can play here, there, uh, this month, here, there, next month, and that, it's, um, you can't actually put together a fulfilled band because anybody worth anything is normally pretty busy, but sure. some of them have actually decided that uh, they'll take a chance on me. Right on. Now, um, Let's let's go back in time for a minute, way back. And this is something I never hear about. Is uh, of course, you know, you came to fame in UFO, but uh, how did how did how did UFO actually get its start? Oh, usual thing, garage band, you know, mums and dads and sort of chipping in and uh, started off. Um, I think when we were about seventeen, started living together actually, but obviously. Not, um, that that was the embryo of UFO, you know. Obviously, uh, we didn't 
particularly change our musical um, desires. We always want to sound like Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, you know, all the best ones. Mm-hmm. We liked it loud. And, um, of course, bands like Free, mm-hmm. um, like that, you know, with Phil's voice and, uh, you know, big, powerful drums, hopefully big, powerful bass, and good songs. Right on. Well, y'all, you actually captured all of that in your future. Uh <laughs> Tell me, oh, thank you. Tell me about the effect uh, your friend Michael Shanker had on the band and, and the music when he joined up with you guys. Well, Michael gave a whole new di- dimension. I would say, I wouldn't say a different direction, uh, but even being growing up sort of 800 miles away in Hanover compared to us in London, um, it's... it's um, the type of music that Michael likes and we like, and uh, just blended perfectly. Even though the only thing that didn't blend too well was, was the language, because when he first started playing with us, he didn't speak much English, and we spoke a little bit of German. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, look, looking back on that, you know, on your UFO catalog and your contribution to the band, which was huge, <laughs> How do you feel about that looking back? Proud. Extremely proud. You know, listen back every now and again. It's it's not something I do where I um, put on a UFO track, but um, actually, if I hear one, I think, oh, we did that well, or oh, that was well produced. I still make the same criticisms that you say, oh, I can hear a mistake there, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> but uh, no, it's um, I don't play my back catalogue for my own pleasure. Um, mm-hmm. I'll play something uh, or let other people play it for their pleasure because they like to ask me about it. Well, Pete, I got to tell you, your fans are some of the most loyal and rabid fans in the world. Everybody. Everybody I run into absolutely adores Pete Way. Well, I'm very grateful to that, and uh, you know, it's you can't buy that. Actually, um, okay, you might be able to buy a good song, perhaps from somebody else, but it's um, just an overall feeling of I don't know. I mean, I'm, I get knocked out by it. You know, people's enthusiasm and people's memories of it, which sometimes their memories, I can't always remember everything, but it brings back happy memories, should I say. Very cool. Um, Here's a funny question that I got from a fan on one of the sites. Uh, They wanted to know who designed your stage outfits, and do you still own them? (laughs) Well, actually, I didn't particularly, um, um, I had ideas for them, but if you remember um, Nigel Harrison, who played bass for Blondie, Mm -hmm. it was his wife's, actually, um, before Nigel uh, joined Blondie, he was a friend of mine, and uh, his um, wife, Oriel, used to be a seamstress, as they say, and... um, so whenever we got to Los Angeles, um, we would want perhaps new stage clothes because you'd be coming perhaps from cold to warm during California. And so then you'd give us a challenge of looking out for something that was different for you. Very cool. Um, look, another question that goes back in time to UFO, and it's one that... A lot of people ask me, and I always kind of wonder about what kind of answer should be given. And that's, you know, everybody knows UFO is a band that over the years was marked by a lot of controversy. And yeah, what could, what could you tell people to help them understand a little better why things were the way they were? Um, well, controversy, I think it was we worked hard nonstop. We didn't really have breaks in our schedule because... Not only did we get popular in the United States, we got popular in most countries around the world. 
So we didn't get a lot of time off, and we um, found ourselves sitting in hotel rooms an awful lot. And sometimes in hotel rooms, he seemed, he seemed to find he needed a bit of medication to keep get you through the night. Mm -hmm. Understand. Uh, after you left UFO, you formed a partnership with uh, Fast Eddie Clark. But uh, you never really, yeah, did. you never really got to be a part of that. What happened there? Um, Chrysalis Records um, put a call injunction on me, stopping me uh, signing a CBS contract. So I bowed out gracefully, uh, having co-written the songs uh, with Eddie and uh, the other guys. Um, I, you know. Um, I couldn't, literally, I couldn't sign any contracts. And that's why uh, the Wasted Band got formed, because Chrysalis decided um, that they were going to put money into uh, into my next project, probably to give me a bit of uh, sugar and honey after um, breaking up what was sort of four months' work of putting a band together with Eddie, you know. Yeah, someone throw you a bone, so to speak, huh? Yeah, exactly. Well, it's awful, it's, trust me, we made sure there was a lot of bones. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> you also uh, you joined Ozzy's band for a tour, the Diary of a Madman tour. How did how did how did that come about, and what was that like? Um, really, because I was friends with him, and I was friends with Sharon. I spent a lot of time with Ozzy in between his making albums and uh, in between his dates. And um, for whatever reason, there was a falling out with Rudy Charzo. And um, we were seeing each other every night, pretty much, and go to the pub and things like that. And it was an obvious thing. Uh, when... Uh, the uh, thing I did with Eddie Clark um, uh, had the call injunction on it. Um, Ozzy said to me, well, how about coming on the road with me? So, uh, therefore, I did. So, uh, therefore, there was a lot of fun to be had and um, a lot of rock and roll. I found it quite difficult, to be honest, adjusting, because I was always... So I used to being in my own band, mm -hmm. and suddenly I was having to play other people's songs. But, uh, no, I mean, we, we had a good time, and uh, the audience seemed to like it. But uh, I have to say, uh, musically, I was a little bit out of my depth at times, because I, I found it hard to adjust. But I travelled with Rossi and Sharon all the time, which I think probably... Uh, didn't do me too many favors with the <laughs> other members of the band, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, in all your projects, you've always been a contributing songwriter. You, you've always got your name in some credits. Uh, you're a great writer. So who were who were you? Who were your heroes as songwriters when you were coming up? What were your influences in uh, the realm of songwriting? Well. Um... <laughs> That's quite a good question because it goes so far from like Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath to Donovan to Bob Dylan, things like that. Rolling Stones very much so, The Who, really around that sort of area. Mm -hmm. Right on. Um, you know, it's funny, I... I was listening to uh, your acoustic record just this morning. I was I was, I was listening to a few songs. Oh, really? On and uh, that was very much just rough and ready, you know. Uh huh. But uh, I get it when you say some of those uh, those uh, influences. You know, you you can you can see that in the music. That's great. I like Johnny Cash a lot, you know. But Bob Dylan, of course, you know. So it's uh, it's all in there. Um, if I could actually make a list, I think the list would be too long for me to uh, to repeat. I understand. I get it. I mean, I like the Bee Gees. I saw a documentary on them the other day, and I 
the early stuff they did, you know, some of it's breathtaking. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, I, obviously I wasn't particularly uh, into their sort of change when they got the, did the disco thing, but as artists, songwriters and words writers, some of them, the very early stuff was... Um, was uh, second to none. I mean, I, I saw on the documentary John Lydon, you know, from Sex Pistols, mm-hmm. was commenting on them, and he was saying pretty much what I'm saying, but actually I always felt the early stuff. I mean, Saturday Night Fever, and I think it was more of a laugh, <laughs> but uh, I never listened to it, obviously. Right on. Um, speaking of listening to music, uh, what do you listen to these days? Is there anything anything new you're digging, or uh, what is it you're listening to? Oh God, that's a, that's a hard one because uh, I find myself more and more listening to older stuff than I do new stuff. But uh, what I try and do is, uh, like, I eat Bob Dylan and things uh, like, I say, the Stones, the Who. Um, there's all sorts of things like the cult, obviously guns, uh, because nothing to do with Mike. Actually, I just like them. Mm-hmm. Anything with attitude, to be honest, and you can be, you know, the most sort of quietest uh, songwriter uh, playing an acoustic, but if it's got attitude and it hits a heart, hits your heart, then that's for me. Right on. Well, you know, you were. You and your band were a huge influence on bands like, you know, Guns N' Roses, Metallica. You know, probably the guy that you influenced the most was uh, Steve Harris from Iron Maiden. What can you tell me about yeah, your relationship Steve, with of Steve? Course. I met Steve um, when he was a mere youngster, and he used to come and see uh, UFO at the uh, little club in London called the Marquee. And... Um, I don't know, apparently I wore striped trousers and things, and Steve said, well, actually, I started wearing them myself, <laughs> but I don't think he ever thought Iron Maiden would become such a big band. Now he's stuck with them. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Um... I mean, you mentioned Metallica, and you mentioned Guns, and you mentioned... Um, Oh, golly, um, uh, Motley. And uh, I believe some of those guys are playing on my album. Very cool. Can't wait to hear that. That's that's going to be an exciting thing to hear. There's a lot. I can't wait to hear it, too. I'll be, I'll be sitting in the queue after you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll all get a lesson soon, I hope. Um... Yeah, I hope so. No, we're expecting good things for Mike Clink to down tools and do uh, it. You know, and put up with me being ill for close to a year is quite something. Well, you know. yeah, sometimes, you know, things are just destined to happen when they happen. And, uh, you know, this is one of those things where I... They I do I, indeed. I, I know all about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, wrapping things up, uh, Any anything else going on in 2015 that you have going on that you want to talk about? Uh, not really. I just wish the soccer team that I support was doing better. And I can't wait to uh, get over to the States. And I'm looking forward to, to annoy Mike Barney. And also, if I get the chance to really annoy Vinnie Moore and sell some more of his underpants. <laughs> right on. I'll tell Vinny you said that. I'll uh, send him a message here in a little Please bit. Please do. I'll see him on Sunday. Please do, Tony. I'll give him a big hug for you. I love... Everybody in San Francisco. Mind you, I love California. Well, actually, I like being in the States, you know. You've got so many good memories and that. But uh, I do like San Francisco. Actually, that was the first place we played uh, in the States. We played in Berkeley, a little a little club. And that was, that was in, I think we were all like, I think we were all about 18 by then. <laughs> That's the thing, you know? Like yesterday. Hey man, well, terrible, but but we had great ambition. Well, I think I think you all did okay. You made a lot of wonderful music, and you made a lot of people awfully happy over the years, Pete. Well, that's great. Thank you, Tony. All right. Well, man, it's been great talking to you, and I I hope I see you in California yeah. sometime soon. 
Well, if he sees Arnie, annoy him for me, won't you? But give him my love at the same time. I sure will. Oh, and also say, I think he owes me a check. But uh, other than that, you know, because I'm sure I've got something on shrapnel, but I haven't, um, I haven't had it audited yet. So, <laughs> so if he could check his account. <laughs> <laughs> I'll mention it to you. Yes, please. Just for a laugh. He'll go, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. All right, Pete. Well, you take care. Thank you very much indeed. I will. And you uh, take care of yourself. And thanks again. So. Yeah, I hope you do. Well, hopefully you'll hear the album pretty soon. And I hope you'll like it as much as Mike's promised me it's going to be great. Right on. There you go. All right. Take care then, my friends. Love to California. You too. Thanks, Pete. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Tony. Bye-bye.